in here. What's up, everybody? It's your favorite storyteller's favorite nerd. And today we are looking at fans toys. Coot. I feel like I gotta have a lot of energy for this review, and I got pretty banged up last night at a Halloween party, so I'm not sure how much energy you're getting. But you will get a review nonetheless. So let's not waste a whole lot of time, shall we? Let's start looking at accessories. So he comes with this blaster, or a blaster rifle maybe. As you saw in the opening footage, he holds it just fine. Not a lick of pain on this thing, so that's a bit of a bummer, but it does have a uh, decent enough sculpt. You have to forgive my hands, that's uh, it's black spray paint. But this is the option, the different option for the face, which is pretty cool. And he does come with a different side guard, but they seem to be pretty identical. Just a, kind of a solid cast. And then uh, you have the extra piece for the eyes as well. But it is a really good sculpt. Like, it looks fantastic. And then you get the different window options uh, with the translucent plastic. Uh, which is a nice translucent. It has some metallic flex in it and, stu and stuff. But, uh, you know, most people lost their lost their poor, fragile minds when they saw that, that this was going to be coming with them. Uh, but then, they, uh, you know, they included the, the flat paint as well. But, yes, this is there. And then he comes with this Target Master, which is about the same size as the previous Target Masters that we've seen from third parties. So, just in case you were curious about that, this is the X-Transpots, and this is the DX9. This guy, I've got to be honest, is pretty lackluster. So, we have some silver face paint and metallic blue face paint for the eyes. Let's see if we can zoom in just a taste. And then that's it. That's it. And then we have the head, which is on a, uh, let's say, all you get out of it is a swivel. And then you have basically universal joints that are on ball pegs at the shoulders, out to 90, all the way around. No bicep swivel, but you get to the elbow ball peg, which is connected to a hinge to get you a double jointed elbow. Nothing for the wrist. Uh, do you get a waist swivel? I don't know. You sure do, so that's cool. That's nice. And then you have T-jointed ball joints for hips. That gets you the full Van Dam And almost the full Monty. The backpack kind of gets in the way. If you get the backpack out of the way, you get the full Monty. It does have a thigh swivel around the ball peg, a double-jointed knee. And the ankles, you get a tilt down, a tilt up. And a rocker. So, you know, it does everything it's supposed to do. It's just there's, you know, there's no extra love put into this. All right, and, like, I'm looking at the other two right here, and I guess that's, like, just the the standard. But I, I don't think it should be the standard. I, I think that a lot of people kind of see this sort of accessory as kind of something to dismiss. And I think that's because the standards for, for this type of accessory are relatively low. All right. And then to get them transformed into a gun, bring this up. Bring this up, fold the arms around on a double joint, which I tell you is a little tightly tolerant, so it's possible that you can pop this ball peg out of the elbow. You know, easy enough to sort back out, but just something worth noting. And then uh, these two forearms interlock here, or plug into one another. Spin the thighs, or the, I'm sorry, the calves around 180 on both. And then you can tab these together, fold these around, and then I uh, probably should make the feet look a little better than I have them. And then bring down the handle. <clears throat> so, you know, not the most elegant, but they, they rarely ever are. But he can hold it just fine. Size comparison wise, there he is with the Unique Toys Blur. It was Unique Toys, wasn't it? Or was it DX9? I can't remember. And the Takara Masterpiece Hot Rod. And I think he scales really well. I, I, he's like, he's just a little bit taller than Hot Rod, which is nice. I mean, it's a good, it's a good look. He, Blur seems very big these days to me, but uh, it's fine. Not a big deal, I guess. Oh, what the hell? We'll throw Magnus in there for good measure as well. All right, so let's talk about the figure. There's a there's a lot that I like here, okay? And then there's a couple things that I think is a little strange decision-wise. So we'll go through and we'll, we'll try to handle it the best we can. The head is on, I think, a ball peg. Not the best, in my opinion. I like the face sculpt. I think it's beautiful. I think they did a great job on the face sculpt. I think that's two faces back-to-back -back that Fans Toys has knocked out of the park. And I say that... Uh, 
basically because of the, the kind of criticisms that they've received in the past for their face sculpts, I think we can all agree they're definitely stepping it up. Then we have uh, a little bit of paint here on the top. And I think that middle piece might just be a different plug-in piece. And then we have the metallic blue eyes, which looks fantastic. And then we have the one issue here. So the issue is, is that the head can't really look down. Um, and I feel like for Cup, that's like really important that he be look like, I just feel like that's a character thing. So I'm not crazy about that. We have a waist swivel. The waist swivel is interesting. I, I was curious how they were going to do it when I was looking at pictures and it does. The cut is here and then the flank pieces will operate around this belt. However, when you get to a certain point, it does start to untab them. So that's not the best either. It's fine, and I don't think it'll bother you. You know, you pose them. I don't think, like, you know what I mean? You're, you're never going to notice that. But it's just something that doesn't work the best. We have paint here on the chest all throughout. We have paint here on the sides, right? Yep, we have paint here. And then we have, this is flat plastic, flat plastic, flat plastic. For the arms, <clears throat> we have universal. But it's just friction, so no good. And then a soft ratchet around which is i'm not even crazy about a ratchet joint here like if, if you're gonna have a ratcheted joint i would prefer it out unless you had like some heavy heavy artillery that he has to hold but i'm not i'm not i'm not one of those guys that gets hung up on ratchets here at the shoulder for this movement anyway and if i but if you are gonna put it there i'd prefer it be a hard ratchet double jointed elbow that works really well but it's not the prettiest not by any stretch of the imagination and then this joint here moves back too, so like you just have to be careful about it as you're not not careful in the sense that, it, that that it's fragile. Careful in the sense of like keeping a pose looking good, you know, and keeping the structure anatomically correct. We have a little bit of uh, orange translucent over top of what looks like silver to me, but I could be wrong about that. That looks good. <clears throat> it's a bit of a weird choice. I'm surprised they didn't go with paint. I'm not sure. <clears throat> it doesn't bother me in the end. But I'm not sure how I feel about it. Like, I'm not sure what my preference would have been. Because, like, I really like how that turned out. I'm not sure how I like this. I think it's fine, though, ultimately. Wrist swivel. Fingers on a base pen knuckle. The index finger is individually... No, or is it? Is it not? I can't tell. I mean, it might be part all part of the same thing. It's all part of the same thing, and it's typewriter fingers. And you know I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Like, I think there should at least be another hinge to, so you can have, like, a pointing hand. You know, like, what are you going to do with this? It's either relax or you hold the gun or fist. And, I mean, it's okay. It's just not the best. All right. For the back, we have this backpack Mac. It's huge. There's just no getting around it. It's, uh, it's not the most unsightly because it pretty much lines up, you know, with the front of the figure. So, when you have him posed, you usually don't even see it. But... It is larger than I thought it was going to be. And it's not pretty. Like all these pieces are just folded up on, like on top of one another. It's just, you know, it's fine. But uh, I, I think this could have probably been more elegant. Okay, so we have hip flaps on hinges. These, once again, don't have the best clearance here. Now you do have this nice silver paint on the belt, which looks great. So you don't really get the full Monty out of it. You know, I mean, you get enough, you get enough for proposing, but I'm just used to more. And that's a, a hard ratchet. And it's one of those inconsistent ratchets as well. And so I'm seeing this more and more these days. And then you have a friction joint out to the side, which makes most people happy. So that's fine. Fold those down. We have a thigh swivel at a perfect cut there. We have a double jointed knee. That works really well. And then we have some silver paint there, some silver paint there, some orange paint there, and some silver paint there. And we have pretty good ankle articulation. So you get basically the toe tilt, which operates as the ankle for the tilt, and then up as well. And then a fantastic rocker, a truly, truly well-built, well-made, well-designed rocker. So there's a lot of good here, and there is paint. Like this is, this is paint, you know, I, I leave my QC stickers on. This is paint. That's paint, you know, and the accents are paint. 
it doesn't have a finish, which is a bit of a bummer, but there is a lot of color breakup, so I think that ultimately it works. I mean, it, it stops people in its tracks, so to speak. I, I had people who were coming downstairs last night and taking a look at him, and they were wowed by him, and I was like, he's got some issues, you know, that, that aren't necessarily, that you can't tell just by looking at it, because it does display very well. But there are some some issues. There are some weird choices. These soft ratchets to me is a weird choice. Um, you know, the sculpt of that double elbow is not the prettiest. And then uh, these hip skirts not really having the clearance. The fact that when you use the waist swivel, it pops out one of these flanks. I mean, like the problem is, is that none of them are deal breakers, right? None of them are a, enough of an issue where you're like, oh, sucks. But it's just like a bunch of little things that... Um, that make you like, man, come on, like, let's tighten, let's tighten it, let's tighten the ship up here, you know, I will say this, though, uh, contrary to, you know, prior releases and reputation, you know, we didn't hear, we didn't hear one FTS fans toy squeak, not one, everything on this figure is tolerance in terms of the articulation perfectly. All right, so let's get him transformed. Untab these pieces on his shoulders. That will allow you to pull the chest forward you can just sort of get all this stuff out of your way and then you need to lift the head up and out so that you can open all of this stuff and then you need to bring this piece up and this piece up so this part we need to pay special attention to so open up the wheels like this 90 degrees and you can even get them out of your way a little bit just for now because what we need to get to is right let me see if i can show you in this space here get his head out of the way right there and it's a sliding bar and it's not it's not the best now i'll tell you it's gotten a lot easier but what I use is a flathead screwdriver, and I, I have this uh, this nicer one here. It's uh, This was given to me, actually, by Joe B. And then I just put it in there and give it a little bit of a turn, and now it slides up fairly easily. And, like, you know, it's not that... It's not as hard as it once was. But my issue mainly is having the space within there to get my fingers to put pressure and there's a number of hinges up in there so you don't want to um there you don't want to put pressure on these hinges because you can get enough torque where you could probably break something so i put a i put a screwdriver head in and i turn and i turn it and then that gives me the enough space to get that slid all the way up now we got to get these uh these side panels here inside of this space so this is another part that's not the most fun flip this up and bring this around and then this piece here comes out and around so same for the other side this comes up and flips around. And this one, I feel like it's going to give me more grief. <clears throat> then the flank piece comes out and around and there okay so now we can get the arms sorted the shoulder will actually hinge down here and that should allow you to get the arm in there and then you bring the elbow down like this palm towards you <clears throat> same on the other side and then you bring down the uh, the front tires here and actually you can kind of get rid of this piece because the problem that as you, I'm sure you can tell is all this stuff that has to move around and kind of getting rid of as much of it as you can as possible is uh, is you know it's just more beneficial in the long run so 
there. All right, so we're gonna tuck the head in. The shoulder pieces have a tendency to tuck along right with it. And then we're going to, I'm gonna swivel this around. This is something that needs to happen later and it's pretty obvious, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it now. And then this stuff all plugs into here. And it just takes a minute to line everything up there. For the legs, we're gonna do one thing first and then we're gonna take a look at the rest of the transformation, okay? So bring the feet down. I think this is die cast as well. Yeah. And then these come up and when they do, the wheels are actually spring loaded and pop down, which is pretty cool. Now, if you turn to the inside, you need to slide this down on a rail that's here and that will allow you to open it up. If you just, as long as you do pretty much what the instructions tell you to do, it's not an issue. All right, so same for the other side. Bend down. Bend up. Use your sliding bar. Put this peg into the knee. Bring the tailboard down and it just has to plug in with everything. There. So now I flip these pieces up as far as I can. Take this piece and unlatch it. Right here, there's a bar. If you just slide the piece over, that will come down and then you can plug it in to the, this part of the trailer. But I'm gonna do a lot of cleaning up at the end. Once again, on this side, up, slide, come back down, lock in. Make sure that this is squared up, this pegs into this, and these two peg in there and there. Uh, it's just, it's a pain. So I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna try it, but it's a, it's a pain. Uh, it's just like these are loose so you can move these around a little bit, but I'll get one and then I'll do the other one off camera sound fair there So I'll get the other one off camera. We'll take a look at it And it's uh, it's honestly it's it's one of the worst transformation sequences of all time uh, It's it sucks and there it is with tiger tracks. I mean the colors and stuff look good I still mine's whip like off balance a bit. This plugs into the back. I still can't get this lined up quite right. The front is paneling. It's just um, I mean, it's a decent. It's not a sculpt. Sculpt is not an issue. It's the engineering. It's just not fun. It's not enjoyable. It's it's a pain. Final thoughts wise, I'm actually I'm not crazy about this guy. I think he's kind of fine. And it's not really because he's mediocre, it's because there's a lot of great things here and there's a lot of really stupid and irritating things. But let's talk about my complaints. There's little small things that bother me. Like I wish they would have painted the inside of the mouth on the alternate face. Like, you know, like painted the teeth and inside. Like you didn't do that? Like, I don't know, that doesn't seem like the company that I'm familiar with when it comes to this company. And then my other major gripe is the engineering. Like, it, it feels like x Transbots engineering to me, is what it feels like. I mean, and don't get me wrong, Fans Toys is not known for their engineering. It's not like they have great engineering. That's not what they nail. But this, this is bad by bad sake in terms of engineering. Like, you kind of have to move things around other things and bend things out of the way, that, which it, it reminds me of a lot of x Transbot stuff, the way that you have to take, like the x Transbot's reflector, for instance. Some of those leg panels, like you have to bend the plastic to kind of get around. Like, that's what you have to do here, it feels like in a lot of cases, with all that stuff that piles up in that backpack of his. I'm not crazy about that. It's not worth the cost of admission for me it's not worth like I, I i would recommend to everyone to not transform this like it's not fun it's not enjoyable the alt mode doesn't I mean, it looks accurate enough i guess but it doesn't look amazing design wise i guess that's a subjective thing but it's not it's not a very cool looking car anyway you know and it's an awful lot of work to get there and it's uh it's a pain it's irritating it's 
frustrating a lot of it so i don't know man if you're a person that likes to flip your transformers back and forth i can't recommend this to you with good conscience it just doesn't make sense now if you like really really frustrating or i should say frustrating i should say if you like really really challenging transformations and that's what you you know you get your kicks off on then yeah this is right up your alley we all know that, or at least I hope we all know, or believe we all know, that transformation sequences is not this company's strength. Their strength is sculpt, paint, build, materials. That's their strength, and they still nail that here. I must say that. Of course, I can always use more paint, but there's a lot of paint on this guy. Articulation works across the board. The sculpt is beautiful, although the backpack is a bit unsightly. And the materials feel fantastic per usual. So if you're an open and display kind of guy or more of an action figure kind of guy when it comes to Transformers, it is a recommend for me. But if you enjoy transforming your Transformers, it is not a recommend for me at all. So this one, unfortunately, you're going to have to make your own decisions. Hopefully, I've made that a little bit easier for you but yeah I just can't you know, I mean you guys know I'm a fans toys fan I I think that they're I think that they make the best transforming figures in the game period that is my opinion I mean we take fans toys very serious around here I can tell you that so you know what time it is what are we gonna be learning about today fans toys say it properly fans toys all right I'm a, on the internet that they give you money. That's not true. You can't believe everything you read on the internet. There's a lot of untruths on the internet. But today, we're going to be talking about fan toys. First release. Who can tell me the first release? Quick Wave! Quick Wave! Quick Wave! But I can't co-sign this transformation. It really sucks. It's probably top five worst transformations for me of all time. Or maybe not of all time, but especially for this year, easily. So, yeah, it's like the opposite of the Millennium Falcon. The Millennium Falcon didn't look like much, but she had it where it counts, kid. This looks like a lot, but when you start getting inside of it, it's a GD mess. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.